PCSX2 is the absolute best PS2 emulator for PC and it has got so much better over the years and in this video I'm gonna show you how to install it and we are going through all the features this emulator has so you can get the best quality and performance out of it now in 2024. This is the complete PCX2 tutorial video. Let's get started. The official website of the emulator is this one right here, pcsx2.net. I'll put the link down below on the description of the video and we're gonna get the latest nightly build of this emulator. There are currently no stable versions available because they're working on the 2.0 release of this emulator which is going to come out sometime soon. But the nightly builds have been the best version of this emulator for a while now. So you're gonna click here on latest nightly and you're gonna download the emulator for the operational system you have. In my case, I'm using Windows, so I'm gonna click right here, and the latest release available is this one, 5801. The emulator will come as a zipped file, so you're gonna have to extract it, and you can use either WinHAR or 7-Zip. I would personally recommend you using 7-Zip over WinHAR, but that's gonna be up to you, as long as you can extract it. So right here on the zip file, you're gonna click on it with the right button, and then you're gonna select 7-zip or WinHAR, depending on what you have. And then I'm just gonna click here on extract here. You can go ahead and delete the original zip file. We're not gonna need this anymore. Before we start the actual installation, there's a little trick we're gonna do here. And first, I need you to make sure that you have file name extensions enabled on your Windows. If they do, you're gonna see the extension of every file, like it's showing here from me. And to do that, you're gonna click here on view. And then you're gonna click here on file name extensions. This is necessary for what we're going to do now. So in the emulator folder, you're gonna click on it with the right button because we're going to create a new text file. So click here on new and then select text document. Now, the name of the file needs to be this one. I want you to erase everything from this new text file and you're gonna write down horrible dot any exactly like this then you're gonna press enter and if you did everything right you're gonna get this window here go ahead and click on yes now we're gonna start the emulator installation so double click here on pcsx2 qt dot ex and when you do that this window will show up and the emulator will generate these folders here here on the installation, there's a few options here if you want to change the language of this emulator and also the theme as well. There's a bunch of them here that you can select with. I'm personally gonna go with Dark Fusion Gray, the default one. I think this one looks great. Keep the automatic updates enabled here. Now go ahead and click here on Next. On this window now, we have to select the folder where the BIOS files are. And the BIOS are required for you to run games on the emulator and they are copyrighted files. And because of that, I can't show you here on the video where to go to get them, but it shouldn't be hard to find if you use Google or something, right? If you know what I mean. And this folder is this one right here that was created on the emulator root folder. So double click here on BIOS and you're gonna place the files in here. These are the BIOS files that I have with me and there's a bunch of them out there and it doesn't really matter which one you get. It's not going to affect the performance of the emulator or anything like that. So when you place them on the folder, you're going to click here on refresh list and they're not going to be showing up here. I'm just going to go ahead and select the American version, then click here on next. Now we have to select the folder where you want the emulator to scan for new games. And this folder was not created by the emulator. So we can do that ourselves, or you can just select any folder on your emulator. So in my case, I'm just gonna create a new folder here called games. Now you're gonna go back to the installation then you're gonna click on add. It should open the emulator folder by default. So I'm just gonna select that games folder I just created and then click on yes, and there you go. Next time I place a game here, the emulator will automatically find it. So now go ahead and click on next. Now we have to configure the controller and this emulator has a automatic mapping function. So if you already have the device you want to use, plug it on your computer, you're gonna make sure that you have DualShock 2 selected here, and then you're gonna click on automatic mapping and it's going to list all the available devices to be used as a controller. 
In my case, I have a Xbox controller, so I'm gonna click here on SDL0. And just like that, it's ready. And this emulator supports all the DualShock controllers and Xbox controllers as well, and even third party controllers if you can make them being recognized as Xbox controllers. And you can use your keyboard as well if that's what you wanna do. Later on, I'm gonna show you how to further configure your controllers, but for now on, if you wanna also use the port 2 controller, if you wanna play games locally, do the exact same thing here for controller port 2. Now, go ahead and click here on next, and we're done with the setup installation. Click here on finish, and just like that, the emulator is ready. This will be a good time to subscribe to the channel and also leave a like on this video. For the more detailed controls that I talked about, here on the emulator, you're gonna click on settings, and you're gonna click here on controllers. Now, on this window, you're gonna click here on controller port one, DualShock 2, and if you wanna do the automatic mapping again, you can use here the automatic mapping function. If I just click here on keyboard, the emulator will come up with a profile input for me, and you can change any individual key if you feel like it. Once you're done configuring the controller the way you want, go ahead and click here on close. We don't have any games loaded yet, so that's what I'm gonna do here now. Back on the emulator folder, that games folder that we created, I'm gonna be placing my games here. The most common game format for a PSX2 is the .iso here. This one will work just as fine. So now I'm gonna go back to the emulator and then click here on scan for new games. Just like that, my games will appear here. There's an option to include cover arts to your games here and I'm gonna go through that later on in the video. Now we're gonna do the configuration on PCSX2. So we're gonna start by clicking here on settings and then click on the first option available here, Interface. On this first tab, there's some options here, but they don't affect the performance or the quality of the emulator. Stuff like starting the emulator at full screen, if you wanna do that. Also hide the cursor in full screen as well. Actually, this one is pretty good. I'm gonna use that. So configure this one in the way you want it. So now we're gonna head over here to the BIOS tab. In here, we have the option to enable fast boot on the emulator, and this will skip the PS2 startup screen whenever you start a game. So this is useful if you just want to get to your games fast, and there is also a fast forward boot as well, so you can start the game even faster. But these options can break some games, so I would not recommend using this one, only the fast boot, really, if you want to skip the startup screen. Now we're going to head over to the emulation tab. And right here, the only options that you want to make sure you have enabled is enable multi-thread VU1 and enable instant VU1. The rest, you don't have to change it. In fact, it's best that you don't because this will affect the gameplay speed and you should only use this if you really know what you're doing. The next option is the graphics tab and this is where the fun is gonna start. Right here on top where it says render it, there's a few graphical outputs we can select. And Vulkan is the one that performs the best for most games out there on this emulator. But if your GPU is outdated, it's not going to show up in here. If that's the case, the second best in my opinion, is OpenGL, but Direct3D 11 and 12 are also pretty good in here. So if you're not sure what to choose from, you can go ahead and leave it on automatic. But if you have Vulkan, I would definitely recommend trying with these one on. But if you don't like it, choose either OpenGL or Direct3D. I'm gonna leave Vulkan selected here for my. And here on adapter, you wanna choose the graphics card that you want the emulator to use. If you have a multiple GPU setup, that is. In my case, I only have the GeForce RTX 37, so that's what I'm gonna select it here. Now, on display, there's only borders full screen to select here on full screen mode, and here on aspect ratio, this is the option that you wanna use if you want to stretch the image of your game. Some games on the PS2 are only available on the four by three aspect ratio, but some of them also have a option or widescreen 16 by nine. If you select widescreen and the game does not have support for that, the emulator will stretch the screen of the game to fit your monitor. But there's something very nice about PCSX2, which are the cheats. And a lot of games have support for widescreen patch on this emulator. So I'm gonna cover this on later on the video, but if you don't know which one to select for now, 
keep it on auto standard here. The next three options, the FMV aspect ratio, the interlacing and bilinear filtering, you don't have to change this one. They're good to go on the default option here. Now let's head over to the rendering tab and the first option here, internal resolution, is one feature that can make games look much better here on the emulator. You can either play your games on their native PS2 resolution here, or you can change all the way to 5K resolution. And ideally here, you want to select the resolution option that matches the resolution of your monitor. In my case, I have a 1080p monitor, so ideally, I want to leave it here on 3x native. But if you have a powerful PC and you want to go beyond that, you can select a resolution that is higher than your monitor. The emulator will render the game at that resolution, but it's going to be fit to be displayed on the resolution of your monitor. For the remaining options, the only one that I'm also going to change here is anisotropic filtering. This one will make your games look much better and it has minimal impact on your GPU. So you can go ahead and select 16x with no trouble. The remaining options, ideally you want to leave them on the default here unless the emulator tells you. That's because when you start the game, the emulator will tell you what are the best settings that you should use on rendering in order to get the best emulation out of the game. But be aware that these options can affect the performance on the emulator, especially on the CPU. This option here, blending accuracy, is one that's particularly heavy on the CPU. So use this one depending on the specs that you have and what the emulator tells you. On the texture replacement tab, these are the options that you want to change here if you're going to install one of those HD texture packs for your game. This emulator supports that and you can find these texture packs out on the internet and also if you just want to mod your game. Next, you're going to head over to the post-processing tab and you have some options here like sharpening with FXAA and it usually looks pretty good on the emulator. There's also features here too like for example, the Lotus CRT. This one is useful if you want to play your games like if you were playing on an actual old television, like if you were playing on an actual CRT monitor. So if you want a look that tries to be faithful to an actual PS2, this is the option here. There's also some other stuff if you want to mess with them and have fun, this is up to you. Next, we just have the OSD and recording tabs. And this is just stuff if you want to show the FPS on your game, if you want to get rid of the notifications, it shows up on the top left corner of the screen as well. And also for recording too, if you want to do actual gameplay recordings without using a external software. We now only have the audio tab here that you should leave it as default unless you know what you're doing here. Also the memory cards tab here if you want to format or use a different memory card or use a memory card that you got from the internet that has a specific save file from the game you're playing, you can do that here as well. And also the network configuration. This emulator can play games online and I actually have a video here on the channel showing you how to play online on PCSX2. I'll put the link of that one on the description of this video as well. And that's pretty much here for the standard settings of PCSX2. Now I'm going to show you how to enable the patches into your games. And the good news is that it has become much easier to add patches into your game on PCSX2. I'm going to use black as an example here. So on the game you want to patch, you're going to click on it with the right button. And then you're going to select properties. And it's going to open a window that's very similar to the one that we were messing with just now. But we now have the patches and the cheats tab available. And to patch your game, you simply have to click here on patches and the emulator will find the patches available to your game. And to activate them into your game, you just have to click here on enable and the next time you start, it's going to enable those cheats. Be aware that some of them will have additional settings that you have to change in order for them to work properly. Like the 60 FPS code for black, for example, you also have to enable the overclock under the emulation tab here in order to make sure that this one works properly. And there's the widescreen patch that I talked about before. Most games will have this one here. And if you're going to use that, make sure that you go to the graphics tab here and then change the aspect ratio to widescreen 16 by 9. 
not every game will have their patches available here because they actually have to import those into the emulator database so there's some that might be missing and if that's the case you have to manually add them yourself and i happen to have a video here on the channel that covers that as well so i'm gonna leave the link on the description of this video as well the next thing i want to show you here is how to add cover arts into your games First, we have to change the display method of the emulator and we have this one selected here by default. So you're going to click on this one like this and the cover art will be displayable. But of course, I'm missing because I just added these games into the emulator and I don't have the images here. And this emulator has a feature that can find the cover art for the games that you currently have installed here and it will find them for you. For that, you want to click here on tools and then you're going to select cover downloader. Now on this window, we just have to input the URL to download covers from. And there is one that was made just for PCSX2. And it can be found on this post right here on GitHub. It's simply called PS2 covers. I'll put the link on the description of the video as well. And they have a software that works really well, but it's much better for us to just grab the URL and just paste that on the emulator. And they give us an option here to download covers on the default format and also 3D covers. In my case, I'm gonna go with the 3D covers here. So you're gonna copy the URL here provided, or you can just click here, just copy that for you. And now go back to the emulator and you just have to simply paste the website right here like this. Now you're gonna click on start and just like that, it will find the covers for the games that you have. You can also increase the image size here or decrease it if you feel like it. In case you grow tired of this art style and you want to use the default one or the 3D, you're going to have to delete the ones you currently have. And they can be found here on the covers folder on the emulator like this. So you're just going to have to delete them, go back to that GitHub page and then copy the link again and just repeat the process. You can also change these cover arts individually as well. You just have to right click the game you want to change and then click here on set cover image and you're going to find the image on your PC that you want to use. Finally, with everything configured, you're just going to double click the game you want to start playing and just like that, the game will start. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and also leave a like as well. I have many other videos like this on the channel showing you how to install and play games on PC. So make sure you check that out. Have fun and as always, I'll see you soon.